This video is called Common Sense, and we're going to be looking at the pamphlet that started a rebellion. So let us begin here. So, first of all, you see this guy here? He's pretty angry. And as you learned in the last video, that's how the colonists were feeling um, towards England. All the taxes, all the things that were going on, they made them pretty, pretty mad. Um, there had been some protests that were happening throughout the 1770s. Most notably, you, you probably remember the Boston Tea Party, where the Sons of Liberty threw the tea into the Boston Harbor while protesting the Tea Act. But although there were different small organized rebellions in Boston and other areas of the country, there really wasn't any national movement because the majority of people, working, regular people, um, who weren't too involved in politics, um, didn't really get involved right away in the American Revolution. That's going to change. So um, in addition to that, most people, even though they were angry, they weren't thinking about independence from England. They wanted to protest the taxes. They were hoping the king would, would stop taxing the United States, but they weren't really thinking about independence. And that all changed uh, when Thomas Paine wrote Common Sense, when it was published in 1776, started writing it in 1775. Anonymously, he didn't put his name on it because he probably would have been killed for treason, um, but it definitely changed the world. And let's look at how this happened. So first of all, what is inside this pamphlet? First of all, um, it is only 48 pages, so it's it's pretty small. It's not like a it's sort of like a book, but not a very big book. It had four sections. The first one talked about what Thomas Paine thought good government looked like. The second section talked about why a monarchy is a bad government. The third section talked about what is happening in America now and how that was bad. And finally, the fourth section talked about the ability of America, what it could become if it was free. And in these four sections, Thomas Paine spells out um, why he thinks the United States should be free of England. And here is really what it says in the pamphlet. First of all, it's, he, Thomas Paine states that it's ridiculous for an island so far away to rule an entire continent. Um, kind of two arguments there. First of all, it's a small little tiny island, this whole continent. Um, why would an island that's smaller rule this big place? Secondly, and especially back then, England was so far away, it would take sometimes months, if not even up to a year, to actually get laws passed and things like that from the colonies to England. So it didn't really make much sense for a place that far away to rule um, America, uh, especially back then. It wouldn't be as big a deal today, probably. First of, uh, second of all, Paine also said that people in America, they weren't really British anymore. Certainly British colonists were in the United States, but people from all over Europe were coming to America, people from Germany, people from Denmark, uh, France, other areas. So it wasn't really a British colony anymore. So it really didn't make sense for England to rule it. Um, another argument Paine makes that was very famous in the document, he keeps referring to England as the mother country. So if England is the mother and the colonies are the children, then why would the mother be so mean to her children is basically his argument trying to say that England really isn't acting like a mother country. Um, being part of England, Thomas Paine wrote, would drag the United States into wars. Recently, the United States got into a war with France in the French and Indian War because England started that war with France. So Paine was fearful that the United States would get into more wars with England in the future. And then finally, Paine said, you know what? Britain is really ruling, England is really ruling the colonies for their benefit. They look at us like, they're gonna, we're going to make money for them. They're not doing what's in the best interest of the colonists, and because of that, we should be free. Now, also, you see my awesome picture here of a guy playing soccer while wearing scuba gear. Well, this is kind of an important picture here just because it shows you what the title Common Sense can do. When people were reading Common Sense, they were thinking, oh, this makes perfect sense. If You, go, you can't go against Common Sense, although this does look kind of fun. All right, so going on here. So what did this document do, this, this small little pamphlet? Um, it was written in plain English. By plain English, I mean that English that everybody could read, even those that weren't very well educated, like this baby down here. But everyone could read it, even the common people, so it appealed to everyone. It made all people feel that they were part of government. Remember before I said that not everyone was involved in those protests? Well, Thomas Paine's pamphlet sort of changed that. This was the best-selling document ever in terms of percentage of readership. So almost everybody in the colonies read it. And that was unusual for something because not everyone, very few people were literate back then or 
at least literally as we would consider it today. So it got a very big following because it was written in a way that everyone could understand. And it made people consider independence from England for the first time. Before they were protesting just to get rid of the taxes, those protests after common sense are going to change to go towards independence. All right, so why is this document important? It helped set the idea that in the United States, all people are part of government. Everyone's going to get involved at this point, not just the, the wealthy people or the, or the educated people. This document wasn't just written for the nobility. Everyone could read it and everyone got involved, and that really set our country toward this idea of everyone being part of the government. The common people, the ones that were inspired by this document, they were the ones who were fighting. They were these guys here, the ones that joined the army, the ones that fought for the revolution. So the short-term benefit of this document was more people were fighting for independence. And you can see ideas from common sense, the idea that all people are involved in government, the idea that um, the government exists for certain purposes. In our next video, the Declaration of Independence, you will see certain elements from common sense make its way into that document as well. This is definitely a formative document. Common sense is part of our history, and it made up part of our ideals as a country. So let's conclude here. So in the mid, we covered in the mid-1700s, people were angry about England, but they were not united. They did not have a common goal of independence. Thomas Paine then comes along. He writes this short little, this little pamphlet thing called Common Sense about his ideas about independence. It was a huge hit. It was written for the common person. Anyone could read it, and everyone did read it. And it just kind of blew everyone away and changed everyone's mind and said, we're going to fight for independence from England. The document lists the reasons why England shouldn't rule the colonies, and we went over a few, but there's more you'll see in class. And then finally, this document inspired the common person to get involved in government, and it set forth the idea that government should be for all people.